when I flirted with a mechanical door so well I tricked the DM. Hi everyone, All Things D&D is back with two stories. Bards get a bad reputation. They're seducers, players, misogynists, or any other colorful word you can think of to describe someone that hits on anything with a pulse. But what do you call a bard that seduces a mechanical door? These are two great examples of bards embodying their stereotype and being awesome. Tell us about your unique bard story after listening to these two. Setting Cassette Futuristic Like early 80s sci-fi and visions of the future space station. System How to be a hero Base 100 Our group was stranded on a space station that was kind of an interplanetary bus terminal because it was attacked by space pirates. I played Astrid, a mechanic and engineer with literally exactly zero social skills, except a certain adorable naive sincerity for 44 out of 100 points. She also had a vast knowledge of basically anything mechanical or electric, as long as it wasn't some high-tech prototype, and a bit of a fetish for all sorts of machines and robots. Our group had to start up a terminal with which we could unlock the doors to a train to get to another section of the space station. But the room we had to get into was blocked by a door with its own AI, situated in the keypad with a small interface, which sounded like one stereotypical bouncer, tough and hard-boiled. Others in the party tried to talk to it, unsuccessfully. After a good roll for mechanical knowledge, I was informed by the DM about its model and a couple of features. So when our group was about to leave, I started talking to the AI. Astrid, intentionally underestimating the door. Hey, okay, so one last question. You're a T750, aren't you? Hey, what do you take me for? I'm a T-800, the door answered, clearly insulted. Oh, sorry, but a T-800? You're, you're brand new, aren't you? Yeah, rolled off the conveyor belt earlier this year, 15th of my kind. Astrid leans in, noticeably interested. Oh my god, then you're... I'm sorry for asking so openly. Astrid goes a bit closer to the interface and lowers her voice. Then you're fitted with plasma coil-powered 500 newton millimeters squared vacuum-lifted hydraulic pistons? The door answered a little boastfully. Usually, yes, but I'm special like that. I was retrofitted with the 750 square newton version for that extra security. Really laying it on thick now, Astrid swooned. Ooh, I've only ever heard of 700 newton millimeters squared, but 750? Is that, is that even physically possible? Charmed by her interest. It is. Take it from me, baby. Whew, oh, okay. I know we've just met and all, but... She whispers into the audio interface, gently caressing the touchpad. May I see them in action and move those 15 by 100 centimeter polytanium door panels? 20 by 100 centimeters? And yes, you may, if you don't try to slip through, though. The door replied with just a hint of skepticism. Oh, my... 20, you say? I promise I won't, Mr. T-800, sir. Game master to me. Okay, roll for lying. I'm not lying. I won't slip through, I said. The GM narrowed his eyes at me. Are you sure? Because if you try it from now on, I'll make sure you'll fail. Absolutely. The GM confused and not quite sure what I was going for. Okay. The door opens, closes, opens, closes a couple of times in a fraction of a second, no less. The AI wasn't lying. That's easily 700 newton millimeters squared. Probably even the promised 750 you're seeing. Meanwhile, the rest of your party is watching the whole scene unfold. Everyone with a very confused and slightly appalled look on their faces. Except Nelly, a pleasure bot who gains sentience before fleeing. Who seems to respect the... interest you take in the door. Whoa, that's the strongest, fastest I've ever seen a naughty door ripped open like that. And those polytanium panels. Can you activate the AC? because I feel like it's getting a little hot in here. Fanning herself some with her collar, she leans over to the touchscreen again. But hey, if you're ready. She pulls a red oil can and pronounces every following adjective strongly and suggestively. I got some nice, fresh, greasy oil. If you'd just open up those panels. What kind of oil? The door asked, rap with anticipation. Lowering her tone and being as seductive as possible. Perlman special with a two-to-one polymer ethanol mixture. I'll give you my best. And then, I want you to. She caresses the touchpad. Show me your best. The GM, still bewildered, narrates, the door opens and you see the pistons and gears exposed in the top corners. Exactly like you expected. 25 centimeter, 120 tooth titanium gears. Okay, I slowly approach the door, stretch and jump a bit to reach the top left corner, 
and stick my octasteel wrench in it. To block it, mind you, not to damage it. The GM squints and looks at me sharply, thinks for a second, then says, I feel like I should have had you rolling for something at this point. But you didn't. And now we're here. Way too late for any rolls, if you ask me. The GM stares and thinks a bit more. Then he says, okay, screw it. If you got me like that, then you got the AI too. So you stick the wrench in a spot where you're sure the torque will neither allow it to close the door nor destroy the wrench, and the entire group is free to enter and leave as they please. We do just that. Nellie starts up and connects to the terminal and opens the doors of the train. Everyone leaves with Astrid being the last, pulling out her wrench as she goes and whispering to the interface, Hey, sorry for doing you like that, but in case it helps, I meant everything I said. And kiss the touchpad goodbye. I don't know how to feel. I guess there's a first time for everything. And now the next story. A bard so horny they shatter illusions. Not D&D 5e, but another high fantasy OGL game called Chroniques Oblies, basically the French proxy of 3.5. Be me, Azimar Bard, chaotic good, your classical pretty and happy-go-lucky musician. Not me, dwarf barbarian, half-elf druidess with her simurg pet, human knight and high-elf forge sword, a sort of artificer, all level 6. The concept of the campaign is that the continent where we are is invaded by a monstrous army of orcs, gnolls, and giants, all manipulated in the shadows by the drows. The key to victory lies in the lost ancient elven capital, which a prophecy says holds the secret to repelling the northern hordes. Problem? We have no clue about the location of the lost city. The team is sent to find a legendary oracle, whose only names and powers are known to us, and who would apparently be able to help decipher the prophecy. Weeks of exploration follow. We finally find the magic tower where she apparently resides. Creepy place. There are not even any guards or traps. Everything seems deserted, except for some statues along the corridors, who look a bit too realistic. Doubt. We eventually come across the room where the oracle is. The place is dark. We hear serpentine whistles coming from her direction, and her silhouette is hidden. Medusa, all right. Mark me down as scared and horny. At least she does not look aggressive for the moment. We explain to her the reason for our arrival, and she agrees to answer us in exchange for offerings. In that case, money. We ask her several questions, but something is wrong. The answers are still ultra-vague and unhelpful. There's more whistling in the room. More importantly, we're running out of money. The team wants to withdraw temporarily the time to evaluate the situation, and to find what's wrong. Awful idea. Hey, can I ask her one last question first? What can go wrong? I manage to convince the knight to give me some coins. He puts his trust in me. I ask her if she's single. The sound of my bardic seduction is only covered by the facepalm of the artificer. I keep borrowing money from the rest of the team, just to ask her for dates and talk about her life. She honestly doesn't know how to respond, and starts to babble like a Japanese drama student. The already strange elements that we had noticed become more pronounced. Then she disappeared. I cringed at her so much that I cast banishment. Turns out the Medusa was actually a sort of hologram slash illusion actioned by gnomes. Their job was to scare potential visitors away, since the real oracle doesn't want to deal with these damned adventurers and their 100 questions. Nosper the gnome was not mentally prepared to be hit on by a bard and panicked. They just decided to let us pass once we understood the situation. Cultural victory. Stereotypes can be hurtful, but in this case, perfectly accurate. I want someone to come up with a concept for a game where every player's a bard and no combat's allowed. They need to charisma their way through the game with just their wit and smolder. Please let us know what you think and comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, All Things d and Our videos are posted every Tuesday and Friday, so stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content.